Hey everyone, this week we're going to be doing some long exposure waterfall photography without a tripod. So I was going to go out and do some really big landscape vistas this morning. But it was really cloudy at sunrise time. So plan B is I've come out to Wyoming Brook and I'm going to do some long exposure waterfall photography. And normally you would do this with a tripod, but for a bit of extra challenge, today I'm going to try and do it handheld without any tripod at all. So I'm going to head on, see what photos we can get, and I'll tell you a little bit more about how I'm going to go about doing this. So a long exposure shot is when you have the shutter open for an extended amount of time and the camera is recording all of the light coming into the camera and onto the sensor for the whole time that the shutter is open. And because of that, you usually want to keep your camera as still as possible because if you move your camera while the shutter is open, it's going to record the light while that happens and you'll end up with a blurred image. So normally people use tripods to stabilise their cameras while they've got that shutter open. But like I said today, I'm giving myself a challenge. I'm going to try and do this handheld. So I'm not going to be getting super long shutter speeds, but anywhere in the region of a second or two should be all right. And I'm going to get some more shots now. And as we get a bit further down, I'm going to tell you some of the other ways that I'm going to try and help myself to get these shots still looking passable and sharp enough, but still having that blurriness in the water. So I'm using the Nikon Z7 today and I brought with me the Nikko 14-30mm f4 lens and also the Nikko 24-70mm f4 lens. I have been using the 24-200mm lens quite a lot recently but I just felt I didn't really need the extra focal length today. The longer your focal length the more any movement is exaggerated so I thought I'd stick to a maximum of 70mm. I'm trying to go less than that if possible, I'm keeping it around 24-30mm to be honest. And I don't have the 2.8 version of the 24-70mm lens, I wish I did. But to be honest, even if I did I wouldn't bring it today because I don't need the maximum aperture of 2.8 because I'm trying to limit the light coming into the camera, not maximise. And also I'm really benefiting from the light weight of this lens. Any extra weight would mean that I'm getting extra vibration when I'm taking the shot.
So I have brought some ND filters with me today, which would limit the amount of light coming into the camera, and that really helps with long exposures. But to be honest, today it's quite low light anyway, it's cloudy, we're in the woodland, and all I'm really needing is my polarizer. I find a polarizer essential for this kind of environment anyway, because it takes the reflection and shine off of rocks, and it also limits the amount of light by just enough that we're getting those one to two second exposure times. So what I'm also doing, which might really save the day, is taking a second shot at a much faster shutter speed, which I can later blend with my slower shutter speed shot. That's a tongue twister. So you might think this is cheating, but it is actually still quite difficult to do because you would normally use a tripod to do this method. So what we would need to do is take the two shots and then they would have to line up fairly perfectly so that when they're in the software, they match up exactly. And then I would rub out the bit of the super sharp one where the water is to reveal the blurred water behind it. But like I said, because we haven't got the tripod, we can't get that exact. But what I'm doing to get around that, and it's not exact, but it does work to a degree, is I'm finding a little spot somewhere in the landscape. So there's a little rock just here, and I'm putting my focus point over that rock. Focusing on that, taking the shot, that was at 120th of a second. I've reduced my ISO down to 64. In fact, 80. We've got Otis in the scene, it doesn't matter. So I'll take the shot. Two seconds. And now in theory, both of those shots are exactly aligned or closely aligned. And we can blend those later in Lightroom and Photoshop. All right, I've got some shots that are usable, I think, so I'm heading back now. I've had a great time today. I think Otis has absolutely loved it, so I'll see you back there. Come on, bud. I've made videos before on the subject of whether you actually need a tripod in a lot of situations for your photography. I personally prefer not to use one if I can. I also found it really freeing not to have the L bracket on the bottom of the camera. That would normally mount the camera on the tripod, but it's so light and manoeuvrable without that, I found it really easy to get the compositions. All of the images that you've seen throughout the video already did make use of the stacking technique that I mentioned earlier. So that's where I took one shot at a slow shutter speed and then a second shot at a much faster shutter speed, overlaid that one on top of the slow one and then just rubbed out the water to reveal the blurry water behind. But I only really did that to maximise the sharpness in the images because the slow shutter speed shots by themselves were already pretty good to be honest and I'll put those on screen now. You'll see they're generally acceptably sharp. You've got that blurred water which we obviously wanted but the surrounding area is still acceptable. You haven't got too much motion blur or anything like that and I only really added the second shot at a faster shutter speed just for that extra maximum sharpness. I did sometimes have to take multiple shots, particularly for the two second exposure times because I was getting some movement and I would have to discard those images. But at each point I was able to get at least one shot that was acceptably sharp with that blurred water. I'm not sure I could have done it without the in-body stabilisation of the Z7, so I would recommend using a camera that has that, or at least a lens that has vibration reduction. But if you don't have those things, you can at least give it a go, and as long as you've got a really steady stance, you might be able to get these shots. I found that if I was standing up with my feet shoulder width apart, elbows tucked into my chest, I'd have a good solid foundation then to minimise any vibration. Or alternatively, I was sitting down, 
with the camera at waist height, and that was nice and solid as well. Obviously using a tripod is the best method to capture long exposures. So if you have got your tripod with you, definitely use that, you're gonna get the best results. But if you're out and about and you don't have your tripod, or you're not wanting to carry one, it is reassuring to know that you can get some long exposures handheld up to about two seconds without any of that extra equipment. So massive thank you for watching. That's about it for this video. If you have found it useful, or you've liked the video in any way, please just give me a thumbs up down below. That really helps with the algorithm, gets the video spread a bit more widely, and it also means that more people can benefit from these tips. Massive thank you to you if you watch every week. I really do appreciate that. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, please just click down there on the big red button or over here on this picture of me. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.